Howdy, howdy folks. Once again, this is Donnie coming at you with another tutorial in our Linux process management series. And this time I would like to demystify this whole business of Linux CPU load averages. So if you do an uptime command like this, you will, of course, see the amount of uptime. Okay, so this machine's been up 12 days. But you also, over here, see these CPU load averages. And what we have here is the CPU load average for the last one minute, the CPU load average for the last five minutes, and the CPU load average for the last 15 minutes. And you can see here that this machine is not busy at all. And the way it works in general is that as your CPU gets busier, these load average numbers will go up. And once the CPU load average numbers get to a certain point, if they continue going up, the performance of the machine is going to start to degrade. The machine is, at some point, will become just completely unresponsive. So this machine here, it's not real busy. Now on this machine over here, on the other hand, yeah, it's a little bit busier. So we have load averages in the six, well, the six uh, dot something range, right? So, uh, so it's busy, but it's still not that bad. Now, one thing that might be a bit confusing to you, especially if you're a beginner at Linux, because I know it was confusing to me at first, is that you might see a load average number on a machine like this, and the machine is still performing very, very well. But if you go to another machine and you see these exact same CPU load average numbers, that machine might be just unresponsive because it's got too much of a load. The reason for that is that these load average numbers are spread across all of the CPU cores in the machine. So in this case here, this particular machine has a pair of hexa-core Opteron CPUs in it for a total of 12 cores. So this number here is not bad at all. Now, if you were to see this number on a single-core Pentium 3 machine, yeah, that would be bad. That this Having this number on a machine with just a single core processor, that would be really bad because that machine would be totally unresponsive. But on this particular machine with the 12 CPU cores, having a load average of six is just, it's nothing, okay? It's, it's not going to hurt it at all. It's still totally responsive. I can still do other stuff on it. It's not going to hurt anything. But anyway, we'll get to that here a little bit more in just a few moments. First, though, I want to get to a little bit of the theory just to tell you a little bit about how this works. So let's come over here and let me find an appropriate brush and appropriate color. Ah, black is good. Okay, so let's say that we have a single lane highway and all the traffic is going from east to west. Now, we don't care about a return highway because nobody wants to come back east. Everybody is going west. And on this single lane highway, we have a bridge. Yeah, that's my bridge. That's my fancy artwork. Yay. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then here we have, crossing the bridge, we have a car. And I'm making a silver car for the simple reason that I drive a silver Plymouth. Yes, a Plymouth. That's how long it's been since I bought a car. <laughs> ah, yeah, but anyway, so we have this car crossing this bridge and it's just zooming right across, right? And we have just one car right after another zooming across this bridge. Nobody is waiting. They're just zooming right across. Okay, so if we equate that to a single core CPU with everybody just zooming right across that bridge, that's going to give us a really, really low load average. So 
this is going to give us a load average of something less than one, less than the whole number one. So it's going to be some sort of a fraction. And uh, with that, of course, you know, your, machi your machine is totally responsive. You shouldn't have any performance issues at all. So that's all good, right? But anyway, as more cars start crossing this bridge, your CPU load averages are going to start going up. But as long as they're still zooming across and there's nobody waiting in line, your load averages are still less than one. Now, let's say that this car over here, we now have a red car, and it's just stopped there. It's just stopped there waiting. And we have like one car, let's, let's get rid of this car here for right now, or we'll disregard that car, and we just have one car here waiting in line to cross that bridge. So this car is stopped for whatever reason. We have this car waiting in line to cross. So this then will give us a load average of one for that CPU. In other words, we have one task that's waiting for the CPU to service it. So when we have that, okay, the, the performance of your machine is still not going to be that bad. It's still going to be okay, right? But as we get more cars, so let's say then that we have, let's make this yellow car here, and we'll pretend that we don't have the cross out. Let's say we have a yellow car there, waiting behind that silver car. We have this lime green car waiting there. The more cars you have waiting, the higher the load average. So with two cars waiting in line, or two tasks waiting in line to be serviced by the CPU, our load average goes up to two. And then if we have three cars waiting in line, load average goes up to three. So for each car we have waiting in line, or for each task waiting in line to be serviced by the CPU, our load average goes up by one for that single CPU core. So, Everybody got that? Okay. <laughs> I don't hear anything, so, well, I wouldn't anyway, because y'all were out there in YouTube land. So. <laughs> but anyway, let's now say that we have a two-lane highway. And again, everybody is going from east to west. This means that our bridge can now handle twice the load or twice the amount of traffic that the single lane bridge could handle. And that's the same for a CPU. So if we have a dual core CPU, then we're going to be able to handle twice as much traffic. So here, instead of having all these cars backed up here, we might have some of them down here. And that's salmon. I think that's going to be a Studebaker. You know, remember the Studebakers from the 50s? They were that salmon color. <laughs> Some of the Edsels were too. But anyway, the point is, instead of having all these cars backed up here, we can now have some cars over here in this other lane. So now our load averages are divided across those two lanes. And we can now have, for example, if we have like uh, a CPU average of 2, and let me draw another car in here. We have a CPU average of two. Now, instead of having two these two cars back here backing up, that means that we now have one car in each lane waiting for the car to go through. So basically, it means a CPU average of two on a dual core CPU means that we have one core with one task waiting for it and another core with another task waiting for it. Okay, so we don't have the two cars backed up in just one lane. So that's why I'm saying the load average is divided amongst all the cores. So, for example, just to give you a better illustration of that, we can come over here. Let's say that we have a CPU load average of 12 on my dual hexacore machine. And we just make it 12 all the way across. Again, that is nothing. That just means 
if we have a, an average of 12 on a dual hexacore machine with a total of 12 cores, that means that each core has one task waiting to be serviced. Now, if we had something else, like, uh, for example, I saw this exact scenario several years ago. I was running a uh, server with a pair of single core Pentium 3 CPUs in it, and so that was just a total of two CPU cores in that machine, and I saw the load averages of it get up to 12. And when that happened, that machine was completely unresponsive. I mean, if I'd go to open a terminal window, for example, it would take 15 minutes. Now, I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. Literally, it would take 15 minutes for that terminal to open up. And then I'd do like an uptime command on it to see the, the load averages. And again, it would take like 15 minutes for that machine to respond. Well, Turned out the problem was a buggy Linux kernel that I got during the, the latest system update. Once I replaced that kernel with a kernel that I had compiled myself, hey, the problem went away. But anyway, that just shows you the difference between having this load average number on a dual core machine and the same load average number on a dual hexacore machine. So again, as I say, the more cores that you have in the machine, the higher your CPU load averages can go, and you'll still be okay. And then uh, the same thing over here, we have on this machine a load average of six. Now, the reason for that is because we have, uh, or I am running a program, I'm running a mining program, a crypto coin mining program, mining Monero, getting paid in Bitcoin. I normally don't do this with this machine because, hey, face it, these old 45 nanometer Optron CPUs are just not energy efficient at all. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, for demo purposes, you know, I'm showing you this. And the reason that the load averages are down to six point something is just because this particular piece of mining software only uses half the CPUs on machine. So right now we have six of these CPUs are busy doing mining and the other six CPU cores are just sitting idle. So if I had all 12 CPU cores running uh, the mining software, then you would see the load averages up in the 12 range. Also, another thing here, uh, if you see just this one minute load average going up and up and up, but these others, the five minute and the 15 minute ones are staying fairly constant, it's probably not anything to worry about because it's probably just some one-time event that's causing a spike in the CPU load and it'll go right back down. But if you see the one minute and the five minute and the 15 minute CPU loads going up and up and up, then you might want to start investigating because that means that you have something sustained that is keeping your CPU cores very, very busy. And uh, as I said before, once they get up to a certain point, then your machine is going to be unresponsive. Having said that, how high is too high? What number is too high? Basically, what I've found is that you can get up to about an average of about two per CPU core. Okay, so again, we're going to say that this is a single core machine right here that we're looking at. You can get up to about an average of two per CPU core, and you still be okay. Once you start going past two per CPU core, then you need to start investigating. So again, on a single core CPU, that'd be a load average of two. On a dual core CPU, that would be a load average of four. On a quad core CPU, that'd be a load average of eight, etc. So basically, uh, just two per CPU core, is going to be good. Once you get beyond that, your machine is going to start getting a little bit more sluggish and it's not going to respond as well. And then the final thing I want to show you is a utility called TOP. Now, we're going to talk about TOP more in detail in the next video. But for right now, I only want to show you up here at the top of the top. We have load averages up here too. 
except this time they're constantly changing. The top gives you a dynamic, constantly changing display of the load averages. Now, again, these are the load averages as they're spread across all 12 cores in this machine. Now, if I hit the number one key like that, that expands it so that now I'm looking at the averages for each individual CPU core. And so here we have CPU cores zero through five, the first six. You see that they are at 100% use and CPUs 6 through 11 are not getting a whole lot of use at all. They're not completely idling, but they're not all that busy either. So this then is why we have a uh, load average of just 6 point something. So anyway, I hope that has cleared up the mystery, and I hope you enjoy my fancy artwork. But anyway, if you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe. And also hit that little bell icon, and you will be notified when I post new videos. So, with all that, have a great day, and we will catch you the next time.